Hey guys, how's it going? Angus here. So today I'm going to be showing you a very simple trick in Mesh Mixer to add extra depth or um, height to certain details in your meshes for printing. So sometimes you'll get files from people that uh, they, might, they might look good in renders, but when you actually go to print them, the definition they've added isn't actually uh, deep enough to actually show up nicely on a 3D print. So I'm going to be showing you how to just simply uh, modify these details to make them a bit deeper or a bit taller so they show up better in prints. So here we've got this uh, sort of little box with a dragon logo on top. So this is debossed by 02 millimeters, which is very, very small. And although it might look good on a, a render or something, a computer render, it wouldn't really show up enough in a final 3D print. So normally if you got a file like this, you would have to tell the guy to go back to his 3D modeler and tell him to add extra depth. But sometimes there's not enough time frame for that to happen. You have to go back down the tool chain. Or sometimes, you know, they might not even have the original modeler still on hand. So you might have to work with this 3D mesh, this STL, uh, to get it printing as quickly as possible. And it's actually quite difficult to do unless you know the right steps. So in Mesh Mixer, what you're going to want to do is use something called Create Face Groups. And in Mesh Mixer, Face Groups lets you separate the um, certain areas of a mesh uh, depending on the angle that it is or the area, the area that it occupies. So you go to Edit and Generate Face Groups. And there's a few uh, options for different thresholds, but really, you know, most uh, options, except don't go all the way down to one or zero, because it often crashes. Um, but, you know, this is this threshold is fine. You know, they're at separate angles, they're separated by 90 degrees, um, so there's no problem at all. So now we've done the create face groups, all these different colors indic indicate a different face group. And by simply double clicking, uh, one of the triangles in that face group, it will select all of those triangles. So we can now very quickly select the areas that we want to modify without having to worry about affecting, you know, the overall shape, which is very nice. So we can just double click, you know, the D, R, A, G, O, N. And we've now selected all the triangles that we want to modify on this shape. So say you want to make this a little bit deeper, you want to, uh, you know, deboss it just a little bit more so it has more definition when it prints. You can go to deform and transform and you just drag down these triangles. And what this is doing, it'll, it'll just sort of stretch the triangles that um, join it up to the main, main body. And yeah, so that's dragged down a bit. There's no real precision, unfortunately, in this in Mesh Mixer, like you can't say drag it down by two or mil or something, but you know, visually, you can you can see for yourself that that's going to be far better. But you know, what if you want to actually emboss this? Well, you just drag it up. You know, there you go. So in some cases, embossing a shape might actually print better and look nicer than debossing letters. So you know, this could print better, and the client might actually want that. So that's just um, clear the selection. And although there might be a few errors introduced by doing this, usually it's pretty good. Like the printer will probably have no problems at all. So if I go to sort of separate shells, it's no issue. And analysis inspector, there's no problems there either. So it's a pretty good STL file. So to go back down the tool chain, you are using the generate face groups tool, and then you're selecting them by double clicking the face group, and then you're doing deform transform. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it. See you around here and make his muse. Bye.